In the comments to yesterday's episode, episode 305, one of the viewers sent us a link, and the link is to the instructions to another kit of the Bismarck. It is the exact same size as what we're doing here. Uh, but uh, I, I did see this, I, I believe this kit, what they do is they send you a little bit of it at a time, and uh, you know, you get the, uh, the first parts and they put them together, and then uh, as uh, best I understand, a week or two later, they'll send you uh, another little batch of parts. I remember seeing a, uh, a video a year or so ago, somebody building this kit, and I was quite impressed. It's quite a deluxe kit. However, uh, it would probably end up costing me uh, four to five times as much here in Canada, if it's even still available. One of the really nice things about this particular kit is the instructions. They are very detailed. They show actual photographs. And what is really good is it shows the rigging. That's something that the instructions that my kit has do not show. And I'm going to be able to, uh, you know, get some hints as to where to run the rigging. And it shows the rigging on the cranes. So the second crane that I'm hoping to be able to finish today, I'm going to, you know, refer to that. And, uh, yeah, th thank you very much uh, to that viewer who sent that link. It's going to be uh, invaluable, I'm sure, when it comes to doing the rigging. Now I must be coming what you might call just a real old softy. And the reason being is a few minutes ago I looked outside and there was a little rabbit on my uh, behind the car there and there was no carrots and I felt bad. Yeah, things like that are starting to bother me. It's just a rabbit for goodness sakes. Now I have spent well over an hour trying to uh, get those lines on. I, I think I've got them more or less. And uh, this part here, you'll notice at the top of it where the roller is, it's uh, a little bit more sticking out right there. Well, according to Stefan's drawings and also from what I get out of the plans, Whoops. This is the way the lines went. I, I would just get it. And then I would try to make things better. And it would come off. Okay, this side is on. But this one right here, it doesn't look like it's... Unless... Aww. Okay, let's have a look there. And, well, you, you can see the hole is sort of there, but it looks like it sort of got filled up with paint or something. Um, well... Let's just basically get it in place and uh, we'll put a little blob of CA on it and then glue it from the bottom. There, that looks pretty good. That looks that looks really good. So why am I going to touch it now? Let's, let's just leave it. I know that the Stefan's drawing shows that it's pushed down and it's flattened all these lines out. But I, I think maybe I'll just leave it. Otherwise what's going to happen is right now these lines do not appear to be chafing anywhere. They're, they, they look pretty good. Whereas if this is pressed down I'm noticing they don't look quite as good. So let's just leave it like that even though maybe on the real ship they were, this roller thing here was pushing down. So let's get a little bit of a CA thin on there and then some CA medium from the bottom. And then, and then uh, touch everything up. You'll notice how on the top of the roller here where the CA glue turned white. Well, 
you know, can't leave that like that. And there's another problem that I'll, I'll show you after. Okay, this is a CA thin. Now that doesn't do uh, that doesn't build up any glue on the top there. So um, once I once I repaint, we won't we won't lose any of the definition between this piece and the other piece. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over and I'll use CA medium on the bottom. Um, maybe I don't need to. I did not put CA medium. Uh, on the bottom like I had originally planned. I just put a little bit more CA thin. Um, I know we're way, we're zoomed away back and you can't see any detail down there now, but um, notice uh, the clevis for the hook. It's not quite straight and there's a bit of a kink in the line. And uh, what I think I'll do is on each crane, I think if it works out, I'll have one simulating that it's going to pick up an aircraft and the other on the other side of the ship can uh, simulate that it's maybe hooking onto a boat. At least that's the plan right now. Um, see if I can readjust everything here so that you can sort of see how those lines go. They actually, like I say, they don't appear to be chafing too bad. So let me see if I can swing my camera around here. This may or may not work. Well, I tried. Now, as well as the fact that our little hook is slightly crooked here. Now, by the way, when you pull down a little bit on that, these, these stretch and it, it, it gets even. But uh, now that's why I was saying if I, if I put an aircraft on it or, you know, attach it down to something, it will uh, straighten out and it'll look normal. Anyway, that's, uh, you know, a long ways down the road. However, uh, we do have another problem, and that is I've used up all of the sample that Tony sent. Um, yeah, I don't have enough to do another crane. So we're going to have to just uh, leave it. I'm going to search around here in Winnipeg and see who sells this stuff. And uh, probably somebody does. I mean, there's a few hobby shops and the railroad clubs and that, you know, that, uh, or, or shops that deal with railroad stuff. And uh, this stuff is. I think they use it for uh, like telephone lines on a, a diorama. Anyway, uh, I'm starting to think out loud and ramble again. We have three different kinds of gray here. Okay, these are the two grays that we painted these parts with, and this is the this is a dark one. I haven't I haven't tried it yet. Uh, the 77, <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, I was thinking possibly trying the 77 on that drum thing that's in the back there that these cables are winding up on. Now I won't be able to do that on camera because I'm going to have to hold it just right, at least I don't think I can, but we should be able to get rid of this uh, uh, gray, this uh, powdery gray here that we've got, uh, you know from the CA glue. Uh, maybe I should use the little brush for that because it's uh, some places there was pretty delicate. Anyway, I'll see if I can video that. So let's get going on that and see what we can do. Okay, clearly I dipped my brush too far into the paint. Now I know that the uh, bottle says, or the jar says, light gray, but uh, the uh, sky gray is actually lighter than the light gray. Now I'm hoping that this is going to, uh, when it uh, dries, It'll blend in with the with the rest of it. And I'm gonna try not to get too much, you know, on the uh, on the cable. So what I did right there. Maybe I'm gonna have to twist this around a little bit so I can see it better. How about out here where we put the CA thin? Now 
I don't want to get it on the part that has the sky gray. little bit of uh, easy line sticking up there. I should have trimmed that off. It's amazing what you what you see when you're looking close up that you don't normally see. Well I think it will look better once it's dry and the uh, paint is turned flat. Okay, because there are so many little places that I have to paint around, there's a couple of lines coming down and then there are these, these supports in the, in the back here. Uh, I think that I'm gonna paint this off camera and uh, we'll just do a before and after shot and this, we should be able to have a fairly good comparison. Yeah, it would have been kind of fun to try and paint it on camera, but there's you know, just only so much I can do. I think our take-up drum is about as done as we can get it. And speaking of done, this crane is done. And as long as we're talking about things that are done, this episode is done. Thanks for watching, and all being well, tomorrow we'll be starting on step 60.